let us practice some more examples about the boolean expressions in the working so that we can have a clear idea and the precise knowledge about the concepts of the gate and how they work first example let alpha be the boolean expression then its circuit diagram is defined as follows okay if alpha is a x dash that is if the output is x dash the complement of input therefore we require a not gate that is by looking at the boolean expressions we can also find out what gate can be used to obtain these expressions similarly if alpha is x plus y that is here the plus is given the plus operation is obtained by addition that is or gate is required here therefore if the boolean expression output is x plus y then its circuit diagram is given by or gate similarly if alpha that is the output is xy then the circuit diagram is given by an and gate as the and gate performs multiplication and from this equation it is clear that xy the multiplication is output therefore the and gate is used here and last but not the least if alpha is beta dash that is if beta is the input and the output alpha is beta dash therefore we can clearly have a clear picture about the circuit or the gate to be used the gate used here will be a not gate let's take other example of the circuit but to find out the boolean expression if alpha is beta x that is one input is beta and the other input is x and if the output is beta into x that is the multiplication then the circuit diagram is obtained using a NAND gate this NAND gate and the output can be beta x which has the multiplication of the two inputs these are some more examples to clarify the concept of the working of the gates alpha is beta plus x then the circuit diagram is OR gate if alpha is beta into gamma that is multiplication then we can use AND gate with one input as beta and the other input as gamma similarly if alpha is beta plus gamma that is OR multiplication we can use OR gate now let's take another example now in today's world cost cutting is of course a very important factor every company would like to design a product which might be having the minimum cost and the maximum benefit then why can't we do the same use or we can why can't we follow the same purpose while designing a gate or while designing a circuit so if we are designing a circuit using the gates the most brilliant idea is to use the minimum number of gates to get the required number of outputs that is less the number of gates used in the circuit it's the simple is the circuit plus less the number of gates used the less is the cost for the circuit therefore it is often preferred to have a circuit which is very economical plus also the circuit should be very much simple to understand and design to for this reason we often perform the minimization of the circuit let us take the example uh, where we can show how the circuit or how the minimum circuit can be drawn plus in this topic we will also study how the simplification of the circuit can be done let us take the example of alpha equal to x y dash plus x dash y uh, it is clear from the circuit that we require one input as x the other input as y plus that is we require an or gate and since there are x dash and y dash we also require the complements of x and y that is the total number of gates required here will be an or gate to obtain the complement of x and y x and y uh, or gate uh, sorry a not gate to obtain the complement of x and y and or gate to obtain the addition of x y dash plus x dash y and the third gate required here will be an and gate that is to bow to perform the multiplication of x y dash and x dash y so after going through this we can have a simple idea how the circuit can be designed which shows x bar this is y x bar y similarly x y bar this x y bar to obtain this that is to obtain plus we require an or gate and the circuit becomes x bar y plus x y bar therefore to simplify the circuit we can draw the same 
given circuit like this now let us study a theorem theorem for the combinational circuit as uh, i have shown you or as i have spoken to you about the minimization of the circuit or the simplicity of the circuit we'll first study the theorem which states that two combinational circuits c1 and c2 having inputs x1 and x2 xn and a single output are equivalent if and only if the boolean expression c1 is equal to the boolean expression c2 that is even though we have a circuit with less number of gate and the other circuit with more number of gates for example in this figure c1 is having less number of gates and c2 is having more number of gates this c1 is equivalent to c2 if the output of c1 is equal to the output of c2 that is the boolean expression for c1 and c2 both should be same to obtain the output so we'll have a detailed study about this circuit how the circuit works for this circuit let's find out the output for this circuit output the first input is x and the other two inputs are y and z okay since x is given to the inverter then the out then the output for this inverter will be x bar which will again go here and be the input to this and gate similarly let us come to this gate y and z now this y is y plus z the output for this or gate gives y plus z which is again the input for and gate so the total output for this circuit is x bar into y plus z which is seen here x bar into y plus z similarly if we perform the operation for c2 this will be same the expression for c2 will be x plus y bar the whole bar plus x bar z that is after simplification it will be x bar y plus x z bar now how this comes basically it's because if we obtain by de morgan's law that is x plus y bar the whole bar uh, i'll explain you by a simple example what de morgan's law is now the de morgan's law states that if a plus b okay if if a plus b is having a bar then the de morgan's law states that a plus b the whole bar is equal to a bar into b bar this is the de morgan's law where if a plus b is having a whole bar then we can break this bar by a bar b bar and the addition sign gets converted into multiplication sign similarly if we have a into b the whole bar is equal to a bar plus b bar this is by de morgan's law the same way this circuit has been worked and found out the we can check out x plus y the whole bar is equal to x bar into y bar the whole bar that is i'll show you x plus y the whole bar sorry x plus y bar the whole bar is written as x bar into y bar bar that is the output will be x bar into y will be the final output that is what is shown in this figure this x bar into y bar that is the final output will be x bar into y and the entire output for this circuit becomes x bar into y plus z hence the two circuits are similar because they have the equal number of they have the same boolean expressions now how we can say whether the circuit is simple or whether the circuit is complex now one circuit is said to be simpler than the other circuit if the first circuit contains fewer gates than the other circuit now in this in this case c1 c1 is having only three number of gates and c2 is having lots and lots of gates so we can clearly con uh, conclude here that c1 is a simple circuit as compared to c2 now again a good technique as we have discussed is to have a circuit with the minimum number of gates so as to have a good simplicity and so as to have a very cost efficient circuit so instead of using this circuits like where we have to use 
different number of NAND gates, multiple number of OR gates. The basic technique or the important technique is to use one gate that can perform all the operations of the basic gates which are AND, OR and NAND. No. So the first universal gate is a NAND gate. What is actually a NAND gate? NAND gate is that gate which performs the complement of the AND gate. That is, NAND gate also performs the multiplication, but the output given by the NAND gate is the complement of the final resultant multiple output. Now, NAND gate is also called as a universal gate. The only reason behind calling it as a universal gate is because NAND gate can be used to perform operations or to use or to get the output that all OR gate, AND gate and NOT gate, those basic gates can give up. Hence the NAND gate is called as a universal gate. So we'll just check out the working of the NAND gate. Let's have the working of the NAND gate. Let A and B be the two inputs. Let's say first input is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Last input is 1, 1. Okay. So this will, the, this will be the input. These are the outputs. Now the NAND gate will perform the output as the multiplication with the complement. The AND gate gives a multiplication 0 into 0. That is, if this is the NAND gate, the NAND gate is very much similar to the AND gate, but it is given as a bubble. This bubble shows that it is a NAND gate, that is, it will perform the complement of the AND gate. So if A and B are two inputs, let us say if A is 0 and B is 0. So as per the AND gate, the output should be 0, but the NAND gate performs the complement of the AND gate therefore the output will be 0 into 0 it gives 1 similarly the output 0 into 1 it should be 0 but the NAND gate performs the complement therefore 0 into 1 it gives again 1 1 into 0 again it gives 1 and 1 into 1 the output should be 1 as per the AND gate but since NAND gate it performs the complement therefore 1 into 1 it gives 0 so from the above fact, we can see that we get all the inputs high, that is we get all the inputs 1, we get all the outputs 1 when any one of the input is 1 or when any one of the input is 0. We get output is 0 when all the inputs are 1. That is, the NAND gate gives high output when any one of the input is low and the NAND gate gives low output when any one of the input is high. The same is shown in this figure. Now let us study the working of the OR gate. OR gate also works the same way like the OR gate, uh, NOR gate, sorry. The NOR gate also works the same way like OR gate. But the only difference is it gives the complement of the output for the OR gate. Let us explain or let us study the understand the working method of how the OR gate is used. Let us say the two inputs of the OR gate this is the symbol for the OR gate. Here the bubble. Now this is the symbol for the OR gate. This bubble denotes the complement of the OR, no, OR gate. This is an OR gate. Let A and B are the two inputs. A, B. The two inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. Let us take the output. 1, 1. So, as per the OR gate, the addition should be 0 plus 0. I'll draw the truth table of the OR gate 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 this will be the output to be 0 1 1 1 OR gate and this is for OR gate but it performs the complement of the OR gate therefore 0 plus 0 it gives 1 0 plus 1 it gives 0 1 plus 0 it gives 0 and 1 plus 1 it gives again 0 that is from the truth table we can check out for the OR gate OR gate it gives exactly complement of the NOR gate that is vice versa that is in OR gate the 0 plus 0 the output is 0 but in NOR gate the 0 plus 1 the output is 1 similarly in NOR gate 0 plus 1 the output is 0 1 plus 0 the output is 0 and you can check out from this OR gate outputs and NOR gate outputs hence OR and NOR gate are complement to each other and NOR gate is also called as a universal gate because we can perform all the operations using NOR gate. 
you can perform all the operations using NAND gate. These two gates can perform the operations which are performed also by the basic gates. Hence they are called as universal gates. 